the 30 years following the Roman invasion, it seems that this place could have been one of the most important and thriving towns on the northern fringes of the empire. Important because the Roman road of Deer Street, their equivalent of the M1, ran down there and crossed the river over there. But with the building of Hadrian's Wall, 100 miles to the north, and the establishment of York, 20 miles in that direction, the Roman Empire expanded, and Legentium, the town of the swords as it was known, seems to have been largely forgotten, except for the people of Castleford, the town that now occupies this site. We've been invited to West Yorkshire to try and find out whether Castleford deserves to be remembered as a major Roman site rather than as a mining town that's fallen on hard times. And as usual, we've got just three days to do it. Mick, what would Roman Castleford have looked like? Well, a whole series of timber forts are here with the main Roman road coming through with a crossing across the river. And then behind that was a vicus or a civil settlement where the, um, well, the ordinary people live, probably the families of the soldiers here. Mick, what is it that we want to do here? Well, there's very little you can see at the moment, but we know from previous excavations there's a lot buried under this car park, buried under the various bits of redevelopment. So there's lots and lots of bits of information, but it doesn't hang together as a coherent story yet, and that's what we're hoping to sort out. What's the archaeology been like here? Well, one of the problems is that it's one Roman fort after another. We've got one fort like that, then there's another fort like that yeah. over the top of it, another one on top of that. We've got bits and bobs of all of them all over the place, but in a town, you dig where you can, not where you really want to. So making sense of those piecemeal excavations, that's the challenge for us. History Hit is an award-winning streaming platform built by history fans for history fans. History Hit is your one-stop shop for quality ancient history documentaries with exclusive videos about our ancestors from ancient Britain to the hidden secrets of Karnak. There's something for everyone. We also aim to bring you the stories and legends that shaped our world through our award-winning podcast network. Sign up now for a free trial and Odyssey fans get 50% off their first three months. Just be sure to use the code ODYSSEY at checkout. Geophys's first challenge is to survey the broken ground of the British Legion car park, which according to local archaeologists should lie deep inside the civilian Roman Vicus. The unprocessed results down, yeah. seem to show plenty of archaeology. According to this, I mean, it's probably about three and a half metres, but... <laughs> 200 metres north of the British Legion site, we're on the edge of one of the many Roman military forts to occupy Castleford. Somewhere along here are the remains of a huge turf defensive rampart, a fortification dating from the earliest phase of Roman occupation. With so much Victorian and modern disturbance, there's little point in Geophys attempting a survey, so Trench 2 started by hand. But the early enthusiasm quickly wanes. Sophie, shouldn't your people actually be doing some digging? Well, yes, we should, and we will be very soon, but we're just waiting for a mechanical digger to help us out. That's not just an excuse? No, it's not an excuse. <laughs> Why is it that we want to dig here? Well, we're trying to relocate the line of the Roman Fort Rampart. We excavated a trench, Trench 14, in the early 1980s, and we project a line from the side of the church, literally coming down between us two, and everything to the north of that line has That's been excavated. Right. That's yeah. right. And so what we're hoping to do is to put in a trench here and to locate the line of that rampart. And then once we've gone beneath the rampart, then hopefully we'll get some waterlogged deposits in which we'll find some early material which will help us to date the first phases of occupation in Castleford. What sort of finds did we get? They found a huge amount, and what was so wonderful about it, it was, it was waterlogged, so the, so the artefacts were, were very well preserved. There were something like 183 pieces of leather, which, which is a huge quantity, and there were the tent fra fragments, military tent fragments, um, a saddle, um, a shield cover, absolutely, absolutely wonderful things, and we're, we're really excited and hoping that we're going to get some of that underneath the rampart in this trench. So is that a hint? Go and get the mechanical digger to Yes, please.
With almost 50 archaeological trenches dug in Castleford over the years, we need to make sure that we position Trench 1 well away from previous excavations. So you've excavated on the far side of Welbeck Street. Have you done any excavations on this side of it? No, this is, is completely archaeological virgin territory. Nobody's excavated on this side of the road at all. So we must be in the Vicus area here then? Well, we're certainly in a civilian area outside the fort, yes. Now, when there was a fort here, there was a Vicus for sure. But after the fort closed down about 100 or so AD, then we have major stone buildings here, which I would describe as more of a town. Certainly, when we were excavating uh, immediately to the west over here, back in the mid-80s, uh, we found major structures in there, large stone structures, which we interpret as being a mancio and a, a, a macallum. What is an Amancio and a Macallum? <laughs> <laughs> right, the Mancio is an officially built roadside inn for staging the Imperial Post, a sort of, a bit of a local kind of uh, police station, tax collecting centre. And next to it, a very large market hall, a Macallum. And could the Roman road be here? Absolutely, it should be. It'd be great if we find that. That would make my weekend. Yeah. Jolly good. <laughs> It's 11 o'clock and the mechanical digger has finally arrived, so work can really start on Trench 2. No such luck over at Trench 1, though, where Geophys have only just finished processing their radar survey. We've got a mass of things going on here. Now, that looks as though it could be good archaeology. How but, deep is that? Well, it could be going down two or three metres, but I'm just a bit concerned that this is all Victorian terrace. There is a lot of concrete here, a lot of disturbance. Yeah, the maps show a, a, a row of terrace houses and yards along this stretch. I'm just wondering whether they might have had cellars. Well, I've been told they didn't have cellars. No, I, I, I was led to believe there right. was no cellars, no. Um, so that might actually be It could be, could be then. Roman we, archaeology. Yeah. We below. ought to know, we ought to know at some stage whether there is any good archaeology underneath here. What about the other end? Well, we, I mean, the whole area is full of interesting responses. But if we go up this end here, I mean, my understanding is that the road comes in on this sort of alignment yeah, here, and it may yeah. just clip the corner. Now, if you look, I mean, look at that response there and look at that response there. When we go to the next trace on the other side of the tape, they're not there. So it could be that that's the road surface and we're just seeing it coming through at that line. So does that mean we're looking at excavating two trenches? I think so. Well, what, what, why, do we, why can't we get it in one trench? A big, well, if, huge <laughs> trench. Well, then what's wrong with one big trench? We need to be able to, I accept, we need to be able to decide where the road is and where the buildings lie up against the road. But equally, we need to be able to see along the road as well, don't we? I agree, Phil. I mean, I think these are really good radar results. They suggest it's going to be good archaeology. Bigger the better. See? <laughs> 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 It's almost lunchtime and we're finally underway with the second digger, though it remains to be seen how much Victorian archaeology lies above what we hope is the Roman road and Vicus. The people of Castleford are also keen to see what lies beneath their streets and are already out in force. It would be amazing if we could find more evidence that Castleford was a major military garrison. This isn't flashy Roman Britain with its villas and mosaics. This is early in the history. We're on the edge of the Roman frontier, so the Romans are still striking out north. This is a perfect place to launch that advance with a river point crossing. We've got the Humber estuary over there, which is much too wide to get across. Out there are the wilds of northern Britain. But I thought that the frontier was much further north, round about Hadrian's Wall. Well, it gets there eventually, but they've got to get there first, and there's a huge long haul of generations of fighting, and this is a great starting off point. The years of Roman occupation have yielded some of the best preserved artefacts ever found in Britain. These shoes are so incredibly well preserved, it's almost impossible to believe they're about 1800 years old. Look, it's really exceptional here in Castleford. It's, this sort of thing is nearly always going to rot away. Anything organic only survives under exceptional conditions. We've got a one-piece leather shoe here, a more complicated shoe called a caliger with a, a thicker sole, and here we've got a hobnail boot. And what you would normally have is that all this leather would have rotted away and we'd just be left with a scattered little shower of rusty nails that wouldn't mean a thing. 
Because we've got this lovely Samian wear bowl. That's right. In. And we've got a brooch, a pair of dental forceps, and this is a little personal item perhaps you could do with Tony. You've got some clippers here, a nail file, and something to uh, remove those inconvenient lumps of earwax that, that fall out from time to time. Are these things that you'd expect to find in a military context? No. In a way, almost all of this could have come from any Roman site in some senses, but there's one specific and definitively military part to all of this, which is this bit of pot. And here is a graffiti on the bottom, and you notice this strange character. Now, most it's, it's incomplete because we've lost the rest of the bowl. Yeah. This is the Roman symbol for a century. A century is a group of 80 men, a division of a cohort or a division of a legion. So is this something that a squaddy might have written on the bottom of his plate to make sure that nobody else nicked it? Absolutely. If you could complete it, it would probably be the name of the centurion. It's our property. No one else is going to use it, but the poor old century seems to have lost it almost straight away because the bowl is unworn on the base, so it's been lost almost as new. And unfortunately, most of Castleford's Roman artefacts are kept in storage over 10 miles away in Wakefield Museum. But the people of Castleford want their own museum, where maybe one day our finds can be exhibited. Meanwhile, Phil seems to have found a hole in his trench. That's either brick or stone. Still, I suppose if we're a little bit more patient, we should find out what that is. Any road, this ain't actually getting us down to the Romans, Dave. Keep digging. <laughs> With trenches one and two well underway, it's time to try and locate the exact route of the Roman road of Deer Street as it passed through Castleford. What are you up to then, Stuart? Chasing Roman road. <laughs> <laughs> I might have known, might know. You can yeah. see on the air photography, this, this line down here yeah. is the extension of the Roman road northwards out of Castleford. Yeah. If you project that line straight down to where the, the ford is thought to be, it goes across a bit of open ground. So we oh, have yes. an opportunity to, to do some geophysics in there and see if the road still survives. Is that still open ground? It there? is. It's uh, football pitches and, and uh, rugby ground. We probably wouldn't be allowed to dig a trench there. <laughs> I don't, though, would I don't know. But it's a great yeah. opportunity to have a, see whether the Roman road actually does come yeah. directly down to where yeah. this, this ford position. Is. If Geophys can find a trace of the road on the sports ground, we should be able to work out exactly where Deer Street crossed the river. Three o'clock day one, and we've finally come down onto what Geophys thought was our Roman road. It looks suspiciously like a Victorian coal cellar to me. You said, you said the archaeology was much more interesting at this end. <laughs> but I didn't think you meant that it was... I said there was a surface about one and a half, two metres down. Don't you think that's good? <laughs> well, we were told there weren't sellers here. That's what I said. Yeah. That's what I said. Well, there's a strong possibility that it's all sellers there. This is really bad news. The Victorians who built the terraced houses of Welbeck Street may have completely destroyed the Roman archaeology that lay beneath. Their deep foundations and cellars removing any trace of Castleford's Vicus and My Roman Road. As the trench is extended, it becomes apparent that there are foundations and cellars everywhere. It looks like the Geophys survey was only seeing the Victorian archaeology. Well, you've got a big hole then. Oh, yeah, but it's really exciting, Tony. Come and have a look you here. You always look. say that. No, no, but look at this. Can you see these sort of patchwork quilts across this area? All those different colours down yeah. there, yeah. That's the remains of the turfs that the Roman soldiers cut to build the rampart of this fort. So how did they build? They would have cut them into manageable sized slabs that each soldier could carry. Yeah. And then stacked them turf to turf or soil to soil to build up uh, a rampart, and exactly. that, you've seen this before, haven't you? I have, that's right, and, and we're seeing exactly the same effect where they've also put in uh, timber planks and it makes a corduroy effect, line upon line of timber. So is that that sort of crisscrossing effect that you can see? Well, you can see, you see the slightly brown stains, and they're linear, aren't they? Yeah, you see yeah. one over here, just a faint trace of one over there. Yeah. And you call it corduroy, like Guy's trousers? Just like corduroy kex. And the brown stain is very degraded. Here, we're not in waterlogged deposits, so the timber has degraded. Hopefully, when we go lower down, we'll start to get organic wood preserved. 
So why are you both so excited about this? I, mean, I can understand why you are, because you haven't seen this before. But Phil, this is the second time this has been uncovered. This is what you came down on last time. Well, we came close to it. The actual rampart we came down on before is a few metres that way. However, what this enables us to see is we get a better idea of what is the angle of the rampart. If we know the angle of the rampart, then we'll know the angle of the ditch, and we might be able to work out what the angle of the Roman road, which goes by the fort, how that relates to yeah. the rampart. See, a lot of these Roman forts are only known because people have dug odd holes, and then they get a bit of rampart here and a bit of rampart there, so they join them up. And, you know, all those shapes you see in the, in the, in the books are, are, are derived like that. So to see more bits of the rampart always helps, you know, you've got more dots to join up. What next? Well, we've got to widen this trench, haven't we, and go back. Certainly back got to go to back. To a bigger area. And then we'll have to think about going down deeper. So it ought to get better and better as we get deeper and deeper. It can only get better, I would say. Yeah. It's almost the end of day one, and Geophys are still searching for the Roman road on the football field north of the river. With any luck, the road surface shouldn't lie too deep under the pitch. That's assuming it hasn't been destroyed by modern development. This morning we started looking for a Roman road which we thought was coming in this direction and we went straight down onto this Victorian coal hole. So we extended the trench up here and then all the way down there and as you can see we hit Victorian building after Victorian building. You disappointed, Stu? No, not entirely. I think there's a possibility that that cellar floor may have preserved deposits below. So it'd be nice to lift it, lift it up and see if there's any waterlogging below. Yeah. But we didn't find any Roman buildings. Yes, we did, Tony. Despite all the Victorian building, we've got a fragment of Roman war. Tomorrow we want to see if we can get some more of it and actually find out the building that it belonged to. So tomorrow, are we just going to extend this trench? We'll do a bit more work in there, but mainly we're going to extend the area Area this way to see if we can pick up more of this wall and see what sort of plan it is and what sort of building it is. Stuart, why extend it this way? Why don't we go in that direction? Well, because this side there were yards rather than buildings and the chances are we've got better preservation here, less disturbance. But if we've got a load of disturbance here, does that mean that there's no chance of me finding my Roman road? I don't think there is here because we think it's now under the present road. But tomorrow we're going to look the other side of the river where we've been looking at the air pictures and so on. We think we've got some really good traces of it and that's where we're going to look and we think we'll find it. You confident? Yeah. <laughs> Join us after the break because hopefully tomorrow we're going to find our Roman road. Yesterday, in our search for evidence of the civilian settlement of Roman Castleford, we found the remains of a row of Victorian terraced houses, which may have destroyed much of the Roman archaeology beneath. But before we extend Trench 1 in another direction, Phil decides to carefully examine what lies behind the cellar walls. It looks like his strategy is paid off. Look, there's pot here. Got it. There's pot there. Look, there's pot all the way along. Look there. Been crunched through by the there, there's another bit there. Same. Yep. And it's there's a pot there. Occupation layer stuffed with material. Still. Lovely. Well, that looks, yeah, that does. It look may be the Victorians did us a favour when they excavated their cellars. Their red brick walls sealing the layers of Roman archaeology behind. See, if any of this was in situ, we could be down near back to our. To the frontage. Back to the frontage. Yesterday, in Trench 2, we found traces of the fort rampart. This crisscross pattern is all that remains of piles of compressed turf. Today, we hope to dig down through the rampart to waterlogged deposits that could yield some amazing artefacts. Talk about bringing history back to life. I mean, look at this picture that's just with reconstruction, which has just been done by Victor. It's absolutely amazing. It's a reconstruction of the fort rampart yeah. as it would have been and obviously modern elements of the town are there and we know from our excavations we know from the the very clear evidence in the trench the uh, the height of the rampart would have been about four meters and four it would have meters. been it would have been angled yeah. so there was a kind of batter or a slope yeah. on it at the back and at the front so this platform at the top we reckon would have been about three meters wide something yeah. like that Covering an area of almost five football pitches and housing up to 500 soldiers, this first century fort would have covered most of modern Castleford's town centre. 
Previous excavations have found that Legentium, as Roman Castleford was called, wasn't just a staging post or temporary garrison, but a town capable of supporting a large military and civilian population. The Roman road of Deer Street ran alongside the fort, crossing the river nearby and heading north towards York. Yesterday, Geophys began looking for any trace of the road north of the river. You got anything, John? Yep, it's looking quite good. Look at this, Tony. If I just play back the results, this is one radar transect. You can see it's all a bit disturbed, not a lot going on. But then, look at this. Wow, it's clear as day, isn't it? I mean, that's about five metres wide. Well, that's great, because the road should be about six metres, so that's right on. Now, that's in the middle of the football pitch. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we want to dig there at the moment. It is a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> isn't it? It would seem a bit unfair. But we've surveyed right at, to the edge here. Yeah. It's a bit more confused. But if we go over here and look... If you go by the pole there... Yeah. That response I was showing you is about here. Now, that ranging pole, Stuart and Henry have marked the line that they think the road follows. Why do they think it follows this path? Well, well, several years ago, the road was found close to the river, and it's also been found several miles to the north. So if it's a proper straight Roman road, then logic dictates that it's going to go whoosh straight through the football field. That's it. So if we put the trench in this part yeah. to start with, maybe we'll find it. And if we don't get it here, then tomorrow we could go on where your radar's found it, on the football pitch, if we get permission. Why not? By 11 o'clock, Trench 3 gets underway. Once the turf is removed by hand, the mechanical digger should quickly be able to confirm John's radar anomaly. We know from previous excavations that Deer Street ran alongside Trench 1, but assumed that the Victorian terraced houses of Welbeck Street had cut through and destroyed any traces of it. But Phil's systematic destruction of the coal cellar seems to have paid off again. I see you got the floor of the cellar up, Phil. We have indeed, Stuart. What have you got, mate? Well, I thought you were going to ask us to auger through this for organics. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you can do it yourself, then. <laughs> it looks a bit solid for we, that, Phil. What we've got is a looks like a Roman road. Oh. Listen to that. Look at that. It is a solid gravel oh, surface. excellent. It's absolutely rock solid. Wow. Well, that's a bit unexpected, isn't it? We thought we'd lost it. Well, we thought it was going to be out there, but, it, you know, here it is. There's pieces of uh, limestone embedded in the surface there, which is the preferred Roman building stone, so I'm pretty sure it's an artefact, it's the road. We did this prediction of where the, the edge might be on this side. Right. And it comes through more or less where these planks are at that sort of angle. So I would suggest that what you're on is the main north-south road through Castleford and over to the Right. To the I mean, the, the, the real clincher Rather is lateral. is is if we can find the road edge ditch just the lateral, over there. The lateral it? drain, yeah. which has got to be just I mean, behind you just somewhere behind in there. Us. Really nice to confirm. A lateral ditch yeah. is what we need yeah, to give absolutely. us a complete width. Magic stuff. The Roman road still dominates the landscape around Castleford, though nowadays it's called the A306. The rest of the landscape has changed dramatically since Roman times, with canals, bridges and weirs giving the appearance that the north of Castleford is almost an island. Though the modern road deviates from the Roman original to cross the river, it's plain to see that if you project the route of the Roman road in a straight line, as it was 1800 years ago, it crosses the football pitch exactly where we've put trench three. Work in Trench 2 is slow going. As each layer of turf ramparts uncovered, it has to be cleaned back by hand and recorded. Our original plan of getting down through the rampart today and into the waterlogged deposits isn't looking good. As well as 30 years of professional excavations in Castleford, there have been many amateur trenches that have yielded surprising results. Were you just digging or were you working on the site? Uh, well, I was working. I was an apprentice bricklayer. Right. And uh, apprentice bricklayer uh, learnt their trade yeah. uh, building manholes. Uh, so I was one of the first ones that came down onto the site. Right. 
yeah. and I caught this and it just half of it dropped out and the oh, other half of the clay. Well, what makes that exciting is it's a complete piece of pottery. Now, mm -hmm. a complete pottery only really turns up in two contexts. One, in a graveyard, mm -hmm. often in a cremation and offering for the dead person, or in a ritual context. And what makes that exciting is there's one theory that there may be a temple here on the site. We're mm -hmm. not sure about that, right. but we're certainly outside the fort and the date of this flagon probably belongs to the military period. It's time to start our reconstruction of Castleford's civilian Vicus area. Graham's flagon was found here, but all we can say at the moment is that this area was probably a cemetery sometime in the first century AD. We now know from Phil's cellar excavations that Deer Street ran north through here at about the same time, and previous excavations revealed evidence of a mansio or temple complex that was also contemporary. But what was happening on our side of the road? Instead of finding a lateral ditch as expected, Katie seems to have uncovered a pit underneath and therefore earlier than the road. Well, what we've got is um, either a pit or a ditch that has been sealed by the Roman road mm. that you found earlier. And what's dating it is this piece of pottery, which is dated to 70 AD. Oh, it's so a nice it's piece very, of, very early. Yes, yeah, nice, very nice piece of South Gaulish. Uh, same in where? Yep. Yep, that, that dating's about right. So what have we got in the pit itself then? Oh, this is a wonderful piece of pottery that seems to be almost complete. It's just the base you can see here. Oh, I got it, right. And it, so it's tipped upside so down. So we've got an upended jar that's been broken just uh, just below its girth rim then. And again, well, it's nice and wet and so on. It's clearly been thrown on a fast wheel and judging by its finish and so on, it looks to be uh, from the sort of Essex, Kent kind of area, judging by the types of clay. These pottery finds are our first proof that Castleford was a thriving town within 30 years of the Roman invasion. Only a prosperous permanent settlement would have bothered to import such high quality tableware. You got my Roman road? No. No. <laughs> so throughout this entire long trench, there's no road? No, nothing. nothing. That's where the line from the map evidence said that the road should be. And it isn't. No. So does that mean that we need to dig a trench in the middle of the football pitch? I'd like to do that because we've definitely got a clear radar response there. I said it was confused here, nothing clear at all. But have we got enough evidence to dig up someone's <laughs> football pitch? Well, I must admit I'm getting a bit more worried, but there is an alternative approach. We could actually put a borehole into our anomaly and a borehole to the side. And if we can see the difference then, then we can make a decision whether it's worth destroying the pitch. Ladies and gentlemen, this man <laughs> is about to stick a borehole through his anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, I thought those turf patterns were fantastic, you yeah, know, really, really showing up well, weren't they? It was, it was textbook stuff, wasn't yeah, it? And yeah. so we've exposed a bit more of that and we'll right. get the lads cleaning up in there. Yeah. But what we've also been doing is getting, getting some boreholes. Ben came with the auger this morning. All right, yeah. And we've put um, three <laughs> auger bores into it. This is to see if you've got the waterlogged stuff down below. Exactly. This. Now we did get dark, moist, organic material in the core. It wasn't waterlogged. It right. wasn't. I know it's only a small core there. Yeah. Because we're right over where you found the waterlogged stuff before, so we're not very far away from that's, that material. That's right. So, so the, it's a bit worrying that it's it's not there, is it? Well, we'll see. Oh I mean, dear. We won't get too pessimistic. <laughs> not yet, just yet. Not yet. No. But it's not all bad news from Trench Two. At least they're finding bits of familiar archaeology. Well, this one's uh, just come out of the trench and it's got some, well, is it graffito or is it...? Well, it's a, it's a little Samian cup, something we call Form 27, so it's a little wine cup like that. But it has, it's got a scratch letter on it. Now, that letter, which if the cup's the right way up, is a Greek letter L, or if it's upside down, it's the letter V or the number, 5. But it's definitely a graffiti, there's no doubt about that. Given that the gap uh, between, I mean, would there have been more? Well, it's possible, but it's, it's rather difficult to say, because unfortunately yeah. it's broken quite close to it. That's right. But it's I'm sure that is a genuine graffiti, yes. Really? Not, yeah. not an imperfection, that's fantastic. No, no, no. And it's unfortunately, it is an ancient break, so yes, we so can't... Well, well, you never know. You right. might find more of it, but it's, I admit it's not very likely. Oh, well. Well, it's something, isn't it? Yeah, it is, absolutely. Better than yeah. Out. Yeah. 
tired muscle. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. Ben's boring skills are much in demand as he attempts to find John's anomaly just outside the penalty area. That was going through something really solid then. I wonder if we've got a really compacted, very dry, ashy layer. It's all modern, rubbish, right. disturbed. I just don't understand it. I think we've got to move a bit to the side and so yeah, on if we go to make around. sure that you're not going Might through just, just a be hole. Missing. Yeah. I mean, that's a limitation of boring you've got to accept. Absolutely. It looks like John's anomaly is just a thin layer of brick rubble, probably dumped when the houses were built, which means that either the Roman road is buried way below the football pitch, or more likely, that it was dug up and destroyed on this side of the river during the factory and canal building frenzy of the Industrial Revolution. End of day two, and it's been a day of mixed results. The finds out of Trench 1 have pushed the civilian story of Castleford back to AD 70. But in Trench 2, we're way behind schedule in our search for more evidence of the early military occupation, assuming that we're digging in the right place. Back on the pitch, the final whistle has blown, and with no sign of the road, John thinks the search is all over. But Geophys is a game of two halves. Join us after the break to find out why. 8.30, day three, and time's running out for us. Over there in Trench 1, we're hampered by loads of Victorian disturbance in our search for the earliest Roman occupation of Castleford. Over there on the far side of the river, Geophys are having one last attempt to find the lost Roman road. And here in Trench 2, we've hit a big problem. Last night, after the cameras stopped rolling, we augured through the bottom of the trench to see if we could find the waterlogged Roman deposits that we'd been looking for and we found nothing. So have we been digging in the wrong place? Have the deposits dried up because of some environmental change two metres down? Overnight, we decided to go for a high-risk strategy. We're going to extend Trench 2 a few metres to the north in the hope of finding the edge of a trench dug in the 1980s, which definitely contained the waterlogged Roman deposits. Jenny. It looks to me like we're going to have to do an enormous amount of work in the, what, six, seven hours that we've got left. Is it actually worth it? It is, yeah, definitely, because this, this trench has opened up questions about the Roman archaeology here that we just weren't expecting at all. What? Well, we, th we knew that they had this fantastic midden deposit over there, literally just beyond where Ian's standing. So we assumed there'd be more of it here and we could sort of find out more about it. But in actual fact, in that tiny space, something really dramatic is obviously happening to the archaeology. And so while we're here, it seems, because it's such an important deposit, it seems a real shame not to have the best stab we can at answering that really important question. But a soggy old midden doesn't actually sound as dramatic as Jenny's pitching it. It was a critical layer in the whole campaign of excavations. We can go back to the early 70s when a local lad first discovered the bathhouse, Ron Jeffries. We can go through the 80s when we were excavating here. We were finding elements of the archaeology, the Roman archaeology of Castleford, the elements of the fort, the bathhouse, elements of the Vicus where Trench 1 is. It wasn't until we got this midden deposit and it was underneath underneath the rampart, it couldn't have been slipped under later, it was actually underneath the rampart where that allowed us to say yes we have got an earlier fort and above that there is a second fort. It was a key element of our campaign. What's that? Is that a, a sewer? That would be... What's there Ian? It's a huge concrete block. Well we seem to have uncovered not a Roman midden but some massive concrete block that appears to be curving. What do you reckon it might be? Well, I, I don't know, but I hope it's not some sort of drain or sewer, because then our, our plan goes out Fly the window. By a trench. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would be dramatic anyway, it which is what you were dramatic. looking for. It would be dramatic, especially if we break it. If we can find some way under that, round it or beyond it, are you still hopeful that we might find 
the kind of dramatic find that you thought we would? Logically, yes. I mean, there has to be an edge to that Midden deposit, and we didn't find it when we were digging in the 80s. So it must come some, somewhere between us and Ian has got to be the edge of that very, very critically important Midden deposit. With the Roman road under the football pitch almost certainly destroyed by the Victorians, Geophys's last chance lies on the field nearest to the riverbank. John to Stuart. Stuart, we've done the football field now and we can't really find anything, just consistent layers of alluvium right across the whole site. Sadly, it looks like Geophys's last survey has ended in failure. It may be doom and gloom elsewhere, but Trench 1 is continuing to yield important information about the Vicus area. Right. <laughs> Shall I talk you through it? T take me through it, Jack. <laughs> Can you see here where the dark gravel is, this yeah. orange gravel? Well, that's where we thought the Roman road was. Yeah. But it, the gravel is actually coming out all the way across here. You can see it here. Oh, right. So we don't think it's the road. So it, it's too extensive it's to too be big. the route through. Yeah. So it right. might be a courtyard or you yeah. know, something like that. Yeah. And then on top of that is this large band of clay. You can see that grey clay, yeah. which, which goes all the way around there. Oh, yes. Which we think yeah. is some kind of leveling platform for some industrial activity oh. which this is our evidence this looks like it's some kind of kiln or furnace well yes a lot of burning in, yeah you in can there. see all the red, the red clay yes this yeah. looks like it's it's all burnt you, this is probably the site the wall of the structure yeah here and then inside has been a whole series of floors you can see all the different layers yeah, in there that have collapsed collapsed in it, and it probably came all the way up here, and, but that's all collapsed. So this is one side here, is it, where it's dipping down, and, and this is the other this, side there. This is the other side. And presumably you can see it on the other side where Phil is, can yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Guy, I've been looking at these, these layers here, trying to get a date for yeah. them, because they're directly related yeah. to this, this uh, furnace structure here. Yeah. And you see we've got this big piece of pot in the, the section. Yeah. Now, I thought originally that it actually is underneath this clay, but the clay that's actually going down, it's going down under it, isn't it? Goes dips down, so it's actually in a yeah. small. Well, I think that's really interesting because it looks to me like, although it's broken now, I bet it was put in there as one piece originally, probably deliberately, in a little depression. There's only two contexts you would get something like that in probably around a grave or maybe associated with a shrine, and it looks like the base of a little wine flagon, so perhaps an offering. So you're saying it's a sort of ritual thing? Well, I know that's a word that well, yeah. we, we perhaps overuse in this, but, but as I say, people do not throw away complete pots like that. It's perfectly normal in the Roman world to make offerings to gods in your place of work or, or around about. Now, obviously the important thing is the date of this thing. Is it going to be of any benefit if we actually get it out? Well, the trouble is we haven't got the top of the flag and that means we haven't got the rim and that's the really diagnostic feature. It looks like a type that probably belongs to the end of the first century, early second century, but I doubt it will be able to do it much better than that. So it now looks like yesterday's gravel surface wasn't Deer Street at all, but perhaps courtyards for houses or small workshops. The kiln or furnace is still a bit of a puzzle. Until we excavate it more completely, we don't know if it was used for pottery, metalworking or glass making. But it does add more weight to the argument that by about 100 AD, Castleford was an important bustling Roman town. So what do you think you've got there, Kerry? got a series of walls running across the trench and there's another wall over here as well we believe yeah. there's another one which has been robbed out further along as well so, so are, like... are these sort of house are these house walls then com coming across it's I, I'm not sure whether it's their houses or it's industrial you've got a lot of burning underneath them which we haven't as yet got into so we're... the buildings look like they're the last phase of activity in yeah. this area you right. can see you can see the wall over there it's lying on R top of right the kiln. over the top yeah. yeah so we really need some dating for those different phases don't we yeah well I'm taking this wall out at the moment and then yeah. I'm going to expose the kiln and hopefully we can go inside it and get some dating evidence from that that's great. And so the weather's not putting you off, really. Well, it is a bit. It's going down it's the back bit, of my it's neck. A bit, it's a bit blue, isn't it? <laughs> Just to add further confusion to the complicated story of Trench One, some of the pottery finds seem to be neither domestic nor industrial. The shape's looking really good. What about the texture? Have a look at this. That's excellent. Uh, it, that's exactly how I think it would have appeared. What do you think this was? Was it a household item? No, no, absolutely not. It's something called a tatsa or an incense jar, sort of cup like that. And if you turn it over, 
you can see there's actually marks of burning inside. It has been used for burning incense, and it's probably either to do with a grave or possibly with a religious site. And we know that several of these were found on the other side of the road from where we're digging, and this is the second one from our site already, so it's definitely looking very interesting. Late this morning, we gave up all hope of finding the lost Roman road on the north side of the river, so now we're going to look for it in the river. John and the rest of his team, and this is a first for time team, are going to try some underwater geophys. What exactly are they going to do, Stuart? Well, they'll look using ground penetrating radar to see if they can find whether there's a ford across the river, that's stone slabs laid, or whether there are remains of a bridge, the bridge piers which would have supported the road over the river. The radar they're using, actually, it will penetrate the bottom of the boat, it'll go through the water and hopefully pick up any mass of stone below. Do geophys people do this kind of thing very often? No, but this technique has actually been tested up in Northumberland on a Roman bridge site, and they did actually get some results, so they're going to have a go. Let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> so what we want to see is if we've seen that again as we go forward. Katie started to excavate the kiln, but instead of dateable industrial artefacts, she seems to have uncovered something far more interesting. I have got wow, treasure wow, wow. for you. Yes, you have. <laughs> that looks like a whole series of complete vessels that have been smashed in situ, doesn't it? Yeah, this, this is one here. Yeah. And then there's another one underneath it here. Mm -hmm. And then one down here. Well, that's like a, a little beaker there. We've got another beaker here. And this looks like a flagon, it's a little wine jar, a drinking thing. Right. And those look just like the kind of things you're going to find in a cremation burial as offerings. Well, funny you should no, say that, really? because I have just found a little bit of burnt bone. You can see it just, just up there. In yes. there. So we probably are into a cremation cemetery. That's going to be outside the fort site, right. or the little town. It's just a question on the, the dating of the pottery, but... Uh, that, Any that's... ideas yet? Well, it's certainly in the earlier part of the Roman period, because in the later part of the Roman period, they buried the bodies, but in the first couple of centuries, the normal practice was to cremate people. Right. And this is a typical sort of assemblage that you would find. There's probably somewhere in here, either a wooden box that would have contained the remains... Right. ...or a larger urn. Are you going to be able to get them all out? Yeah, I should do. Fantastic. Come back later. Everyone's working flat out in Trench 2. They're now well below the base of the fort rampart and Guy's pottery expertise is needed everywhere. Guy, I've got the same in for you. Let's have a look. If I can show you. I've got some questions. Does it come from a stratified deposit? It does, yes. Right. Well, the good news is they're from the same bowl. That's excellent. Right. Now, the fantastic thing is, you see that profile there? Yeah quite sharply carinated. That's a type of bowl, Form 29 Samin, that dies out around the year 85. So we're right back into the military phase. We're definitely with the fort here. So anything below that is early, early in Roman occupation here, right at the beginning. This morning's extension is now nearly two metres deep, but only large enough for one digger. At least Ian's down onto what looks and smells organic. It's not malodorous, it's not awful, but it's very, very earthy, it's very distinctive, isn't it? And is that what you would have expected to see? It's what, it's, it's similar, it's close to what we found. Um, there's some, I was looking at the materials, some, there was some very compressed wood in there, and it's on the margin of being preserved. I think that's a bit drier, a bit drier than what we had. Does it feel like a waterlogged deposit down there, or is it...? Well, on, on the top, which I've taken off, it was really hard and uh, crusty, mm. very hard. But as I've gone underneath onto this clay, it's starting to get a bit softer, but it's not really wet. We'll have to see, really. It's uh, interesting, interesting stuff. Oh, wow. What's that? Oh, wow. What is it, Sophie? I'm not show sure us, us. what it is. Well, that wow. is pretty spectacular. So is, this, is this just mud? That looks like bone, I think, so... Take what do you think? That's... Yeah, that's bone. And um, that's just stain, metal staining? You can see a lot of the fibres on this as well, so I don't know if there's any leather in there or anything. But there's metal there, isn't there? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it looks like to be a, a terminal there, a terminal there. It might be a penannular brooch, you know, where there's two terminals where it ends, so it's not quite circular. Like a pair of stereo headphones? Exactly. <laughs> The Penanula brooch dates back to the earliest phase of Roman military occupation. It may even have come over with a soldier during the invasion. 
broken over 1,800 years ago and thrown into the fort's rubbish dump. The story of Trench 2 is almost complete. We knew from the 1980s excavation that the waterlogged deposits were at a depth of one and a half metres, and it was assumed that they lay in a single layer spread underneath the rampart. But our excavation has proved that they were in fact lying in a large rubbish pit especially constructed by the Romans. The 1980s trench came right down into this pit. Our trench extension has now found the edge. We may not have found any amazing leather artefacts, but at least we've answered a question that's been puzzling Phil for a long time. It means that when we were digging here in the 80s, we came about 50 centimetres away from the edge of that midden. It's taken me about 18 years to find that out. Oh, no. <laughs> Back on the river, the engines conked out. So in true Time Team style, Geofiz are improvising. I could see through glass this technique of being dragged from bank to bank may not be textbook, but they've almost completed a series of parallel linear passes across the width of the river, with amazing results. They've actually got something across there. They're reading to about, what, four metres out, aren't they, Stevie? Something like that, from the bank at the moment. Just went over something between those two bushes, Stuart. That would do very nicely. You need to go back at least 15 metres or so. Stretching across the river from where Stuart's standing, they've had a series of consecutive linear hits. If they'd had more time, more passes would have undoubtedly produced more hits, which means this feature can't be old prams or junk. It must be our submerged Roman road. Our perseverance has paid off. We've achieved our objectives. So now we can offer you our view of what life was like during the early years of Roman occupation in Castleford. In 70 AD, Deer Street had a mansio or temple. On the other side of the road, there were houses. By 100 AD, some of the houses had turned into workshops, with maybe kilns for pottery or furnaces for glassmaking. Within another 50 years, all of the houses and industry were gone. This area of Castleford then became, for a short while at least, a place to cremate and bury the dead. We've almost run out of time and the finds are still coming out of Trench 1. As the cremation pots are being carefully lifted for laboratory analysis, another cremation is found in the corner of the trench. Phil's coal cellar is also still yielding important domestic artefacts, a metal stud or fastening, and large pieces of broken glass from the Roman equivalent of a kitchen storage jar. The house next door shows evidence of industrial use, with a small pottery kiln and large pieces of a broken mortarium, complete with maker's mark. Mick, I don't think I've ever seen you get as enthusiastic about a time team trench as you've been about this one. Why? Yeah. Well, we've managed to get much deeper down into the archaeology here than we'd normally do on a time team excavation. How come we've got so deep? Well, partly because of the brick-built 19th century cellars, but mainly because somebody dug a big hole here recently and filled it full of bricks. And by cleaning that out, we've been able to see the layers in the archaeology all the way around, which give us hundreds of years of the town's history. It has been a good dig, hasn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Over the last three days, we've managed to locate the rampart of the fort over in the co-op car park, and we now know which direction that rampart went in. We also now know where the Roman road crossed the river. And here, we've got evidence of industrial activity, of ritual activity, of burials, of human activity. We can say quite confidently now that during the Roman occupation, Castleford was buzzing. And as for the fines, well, wouldn't it be great if one day they could be housed here in Castleford in a brand new museum dedicated to your Roman history?